The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 741 All is Quiet Valet stepped into the cargo bay, standing atop a staircase that connected it to the deck above and the hallway for the cabins. The hold was dimly lit, vibrating slightly as the ship surged forward at twice its usual speed and causing the crates and boxes to rattle, almost creating more noise than the storm had outside. Ah, gazelle! Valet peered around the room. You go this way! Down below, Princess Gwendolyn stepped into a patch of light, glancing up at the stairs. He went that way, she said, voice slightly too even, as she pointed a paw at the cabin hall door. Valet almost threw open the door to give chase, then hesitated. It was loud in the room, but not so loud she wouldn't hear if Gazelle was getting screamed at. She blinked back at the filly. You okay in here? By yourself? Not the coziest place, you know. Gwendolyn gracefully straightened her shoulders. You didn't ask to play host to royalty, and I didn't ask you. You accept no blame if my brother and I have to deal with accommodations that are less than what we are used to. Yeah, that's not what I asked, though, Valet frowned. You know there are more comfortable spots on the ship, right? This is basically our basement. We've got an empty cabin or two right through here, and I'm sure Shinespark would lend you hers. The princess's voice dropped a notch, and she moved her face away from the light. Like I said, my brother went that way. Valet blinked. But, you know, well, okay then. She opened the door to the cabin level, stepped through, and almost immediately found herself face to face with Gazelle, who was leaning against the door to Crystal's room with a far too content smile. Valet instantly blanched. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Gazelle's eyes widened in shock as Valet appeared, and he hopped hurriedly to his hooves, licking his fur to straighten it and adopting an air of utter innocence. Fantasizing about turning in for the night after a hard day's work? Why ever do you ask? Ah ha! Valley stalked forward, Felicity and Senese watching her back at a distance. Look, buddy, you have no capital to mess with us right now, and tonight there are no places on the ship more off limits to hooliganism and antics than that room. Fine, you got me. I'm meditating to the sounds of impending misfortune, Gazelle licked his lips. Listen, I've had a very exciting day and can be forgiven if I'm feeling a little giddy. Believe me, I have absolutely no desire to interfere with Crystal's door slid open and Harsh Water stood there, looking cross. She got crosser when she saw Gazelle. I don't know why you're back, but please stand somewhere where you aren't upsetting my patience, she demanded. Gazelle whistled. It takes a lot of moxie to boss around a prince. I like your style, midwife. Don't worry, don't worry, my wings and paws are henceforth tied. Valet pushed closer, getting in Gazelle's space and trying to make him take a step back, noting Amber and Crystal in the room to the side. She's at shoe, she insisted, meeting his eyes and glaring up at him. Oh, I heard, Gazelle purred. Valet, I've had a very exciting day. Please forgive me if the adrenaline has gone to my head a little, but you are a useful ally and far from someone I intend to unnecessarily antagonize. Point me to somewhere to sit, and there I shall stay. Valet gave him a strange look as Harshwater slammed the door. Yeah? Uh, how about that cabin right over there? In that room? Sit, stay, until... Why are you even coming with us? Before Gazelle could answer, there was a soft tapping of hoofsteps behind her. Suddenly, Valet felt a sensation like a bucket of ice water being dumped on her head as Felicity turned on her cutie mark full blast. That's enough, Felicity said calmly. Gazelle's pupils twitched, then shrank from their overdilation as he held a paw to his head. Kindly appreciated. Ow. Valet felt almost ejected from herself as the force of Felicity's power suppressed and detached her emotions, though she could feel the burst quickly waning to steadier levels. Under this light, Gazelle seemed far less concerning for whatever he had done than what he could do still. 
What mattered was to find a way to invite him off their ship, make sure he stayed off, and then everyone could focus on less immediate problems like figuring out what to do with Felicity and her sisters. After, they had reunited Crystal and Percival, of course. I see you looking at that door, Gazelle added, as he stepped toward the room Valet had directed. You're thinking about her. No, I have no qualms with Percival quitting his job and eloping. Perhaps they'll enjoy their happily ever after. Maybe, if they're exceptionally wise and lucky. He slid the door open and stepped inside. Valet blinked, registering the barest hint of muted surprise. She turned to Felicity and nodded. As sneaky as that can be, it's a really cool cutie mark. Felicity let her aura fade with a strange sigh. Thank you, darling. Now, I advise letting him be. He wasn't lying, you know. Sphinxes have a tendency to get very into their excitement, and you absolutely won't have a productive conversation with him right now. Give him some time to calm down. Yeah, Valet glanced back at Crystal's door. So, how up are you for letting a hoof in there? Any funny business before we've talked to everyone about you, and I will hunt you down and destroy you, but I'm really not seeing what you could gain by backstabbing us somehow here. Felicity's face fell. That hurts, though I can't say we don't deserve it. But yes, my skills are completely at your service. The door cracked open again, harsh water poking an eye out with a panting crystal pacing in circles behind her. So you made it back. Why is Gazelle here? It's a long story, Valet rolled her eyes. And one you better believe everyone is going to hear once he's off our boat and we get to his valley. For now, how's Crystal doing and could you use help? She pulled Felicity into view. Painful, Crystal admitted, walking to the door. And yes, she folded her ears. Please. Of course, darling. Felicity took a breath, smiled, and stepped inside as harsh water opened the door wider. Valet blinked slightly at Crystal's friendlier demeanor. Not bad, huh? Anything I can do? Crystal met her eyes, urgency in her own. Tell me how far we have left. When will we get there? I need Percival. How far? Harsh water placed a wing on her withers. Shh. Shine Spark has us going at double speed, and you're coming slow. It'll be hours, but you're going to be fine. I hope so, Crystal whispered loudly. Please, please. Slightly uncomfortable, Valet retreated, shutting the door to check on the rest of the ship. She knew where Gazelle and Gwendolyn were. Senese was at her side. Slowly, Valet wandered the halls, checking the rest of her friends. Maple was face down at her bed, starlight on her back, and a pillow clasped over her ears. Granada was in the observation room. Amber was already accounted for. Slipstream and Gerardo were sleeping. Jam jars and Glimmer were in the former's room. Shine Spark must have been on the bridge. Satisfied with her search, Valet found Senesea room and then retired to lay with Maple and Starlight, resting on the knowledge that whatever was happening in Stormhoof, there was nothing more she could or wanted to do. End of chapter 741